Hello. So following up on the lecture today, we set um, ourselves with a little uh, project where, where we can say stuck run and it will handle input from the standard input in such a way that we get the numbers, integers in our case, parsed properly into the integer array, integer list. So if I enter three correctly formatted integers and then I put some rubbish and I put the fourth number in um, and I press end of the stream, we're going to get a list of the of the numbers of integers <clears throat> properly parsed from the input string. And we were doing it uh, in a fashion that handles errors through maybe int, uh, such that um, we have this utility function, which takes a string, produces a maybe int. And if we pass it nothing, or if there is an error, we either get nothing or a maybe int. Uh, you can, of course, modify it to work with floats uh, instead of ints, and you can handle the input in a form of, of floating point numbers. Um, that doesn't seem very useful, but uh, what could we do with a list of numbers? Well, we could do some mathematical operations on them. Uh, so how hard would it be to write a simple calculator which would be like a command line calcul calculator that works with ints in our case, but as I said, you can modify it to, to floats. Well, um, it would be actually quite cumbersome, uh, doable, but a little bit cumbersome. So let me explain. So I draw here a kind of a small figure. Um, so if we think about an expression that we would like to deal with, um, so if we have 3 plus 4 multiplied by 2 plus 3, we have to deal with the brackets. And dealing with the brackets gets somewhat complicated. And eventually it looks like a tree because we have this sort of a top level node and we have the left and right sides. And then the left hand side is the another operator which takes two children and then plus operator, which again takes two children. Those are um, uh, functions which take two parameters. That's why we have kind of a left and right sides. If we had like a negation operation, it would only take a one number, right? So you can see here that we have kind of a tokens, nodes, which are either operations that we need to do or the numbers that we operating on. Um, and Dealing with this tree and parsing this type of expression uh, into a tree. Sorry. Um, it would be a little bit cumbersome. Um, so what we can do is looking at this expression tree, we can see that we can flatten it. So if we traverse the tree from the from the bottom leftmost element, we can sort of reconstruct uh, the entire tree by having a linear representation of the tree in a kind of a list form. So if we start with three, um, we see that um, I'm losing my mouse sometimes. Yeah, so sorry for that. So if we start with this three uh, and we follow all the left, left, right, up, left, right, up, we can kind of reconstruct that. So um, left, right, up, and then from this one, we go all the way down to the, to the leaf node, which is this, tr this number two here. Um, we see it's again left right up and then for the final multiplication we do left and right uh, 
such that we end up with a flat structure which says 3, 4 plus 2, 3 plus and multiply of the remaining two left and right sides, right? Um, so this is um, actually called a reversed Polish notation. It's a notation for doing calculations on a calculator without using the brackets. And then you can write, you know, complex expressions without the need for brackets because you can always do um, infer what the correct order of operation is because it's given in the kind of a linear fashion. So if we go back, um, if we go back to our uh, IDE, I just need to get hold of the mouse again. All right, so we could uh, think of it that if I have kind of a complex expression, for example, um, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4 multiplied by 3, uh, that would be 2, 4 plus 3 multiply, right? Um, that would create me this tree where I have two, four on the, um, on, as a, uh, children. I have a plus, I have a multiplication on the, uh, as a left child, uh, which has the plus, And then I have a number three, which has the, on the right hand side, instead of the, uh, multiplication, right? So this is kind of an equivalent of this tree and this tree can be flattened to this. So, okay, so now we sort of know how to do complex arithmetic operations using notation without the brackets, such that our task is simple, and you see that our space-separated tokens are kind of what we already have. So we already can parse kind of space-separated tokens by just calling words on the input. So that's pretty straightforward. So the only thing that we need to do now is to handle the arithmetic operations uh, and distinguish them from numbers. So we have two, two things. Uh, we have the numbers and we have arithmetic operations, which are kind of a single character strings at the moment, but we can treat them as strings because they are space separated. So our words based parser will give us the whatever that is. So in fact, I could have I could have two, four, diff as an operator, right? Uh, I could have operator like this. I don't need to have a single character. Right, so um, what we need to do is we need to model this ability to parse the, the elements, but we also need to think how to store the partial evaluation of what we're doing. So if we stick to this equation, to this expression, uh, when, we, when we get it to calculate what the outcome is, what, what we're doing is we sort of put two and four on a side, and then we know we have to do plus on, it, on them. So it wraps up itself to six, and then we put three, And then we know that for multiplication, we need to multiply them. So it ends up with 18, right? So in, in, a, in an essence, we have sort of like, um, so this, um, this is shortened to this, and this is shortened to 18, right? Um, we can use um, a stack Oper, um, stack data structure for representing the operands for our functions, such that plus will take two elements from the stack and um, add them, and then number three is put on top of what has been already calculated, and it kind of calculates the, the result. So I can rewrite, so this, this expression here, um, which says, Uh, two, four plus three multiply is kind of the same as if I did three, two, four plus multiply, right? It, it is kind of the same because what happens here is I have to add two elements and 
by adding those two elements, I can shorten the, the, uh, the stack from three numbers to two numbers, right? So initially I have three numbers on the stack and then by doing two, I will do two plus four first, which ends up with six. And because I already had three on the uh, bottom of the stack, I end up with this and then I have the multiplication to do and that will wrap up my stack to number 18. And I will end up with number 18 on the stack. So if everything is lined up correctly and if my expression is correctly lined up, what I will have is I will have some sort of operations on the, um, on the stack, uh, some results on the stack, and I can apply my functions on top of the stack. Right, so this, you know, this is kind of a very brief um, intro to what, what we need to do. And um, we can uh, specify our stack data structure as simply as a stack, which is um, a list of ints. However, we need to deal with errors, right? So we know that um, some operations may result in something going wrong in which case uh, just saying, okay, the stack only has ints, it, it's gonna work, but it's not gonna handle the, uh, some of the problems that we might have with, um, uh, with the error conditions. So we will kind of postpone it until later, but we will start with the simpler version of representing kind of our results purely as ints and then we will not deal with errors. So if there are errors, uh, they're gonna probably blow up the program and we will add error handling as a second iteration of, of, of this exercise, right? So um, simple representation of a data stack. Um, all right, so we have um, a basic stack and then we need a couple of functions to allow us the um, the computing that we need to do. So we need a um, couple of functions to do addition, multiplication, uh, and, and so on. But those functions are already built in into Haskell, so we don't need to define them. Um, we need to define a function which executes them when we are traversing the, uh, the input string. So when when we get this input, it will be, so currently we, we kind of getting it. Uh, so if I, I don't really want to run it again, but if, if you imagine that I, I run it and I type it, so I will have one, two, and then I will type plus to, to, if I want to add those two numbers. And then if I want to multiply the result by three, I will add three and multiply, or I could do three, one, two, plus multiply and it would be kind of the same, but the program should deal with uh, both cases and the program will have to traverse um, some, you know, number by number and then operation by operation and do something uh, to calculate the final result. So we need some sort of function, which um, uh, let's call it eval uh, or uh, eval, yeah, whatever the, the name could be um, and it will take a string and then it will return us um, something. So when I give it a particular character, I need to update two things. I need to update what my current state of calculation is. Um, and also I need to um, decide uh, what to do if the operation is kind of doing something, right? So I will kind of update the, the, the stack um, and I can call it, you know, token by token, updating the stack and updating the, uh, what is happening inside the, inside my program state data structure. So the, the, the program state in my case is just the stack. So it means I will sort of, uh, take the current state of the stack and I will uh, provide the output, which is the updated state of the stack, right? Um, so if I am called with um, a string S, um, I have to decide 
what to do with it. So if S is of a particular um, character that makes a, a arithmetic operation, I will do the operation on top of the stack and return the updated stack. And if the S is just a number, then I will uh, put that number on top of the stack. So let's use the pattern matching and let's use guards. So if I have S that equals to multiplication, I have to do um, two things. I need to take two elements out of my stack, add them and put the result ba back on the stack, right? So that should be pretty straightforward. Um, so my, yeah, so also the, uh, the stack is given to me in the, in the call because the, the function takes two parameters here. So uh, the, the final outcome will be again, a list, which in my case is a list of ints. And I will take the head of the stack and I will add it to the uh, second element of the stack, which is index one. And then I will concatenate it with the, I need to drop two elements from my stack and concatenate it with the result of this calculation, right? So this is uh, not plus multiply. Uh, this is what I will do for multiplication. And then if S is um, plus, I will do the plus instead, right? So I do, I'm doing basically the same thing. I'm just doing the plus and we can add division and um, minus as well. Uh, but for the brevity, we st st stop here and we say, otherwise, if it's not one of the known operations that we are doing, uh, what we should do? We should take this, um, this S and try to parse it into an int and put it onto our stack. And for that, we will kind of uh, use the convert method that we used in the lecture. So we will say convert string to maybe, and we will convert it to S, but the, this could return us an int or nothing if, if it failed, right? So otherwise we either got nothing or we will get int. And we can use the case, um, um, case expression. So we will say case of, and in case we get nothing, what should we do? Um, we should leave the stack as it is because we got some rubbish input and we don't modify our stack. So we return the stack as it was. So we basically uh, return the stack state as it was before we got called. And then if we got just number n, then we will concatenate this number and put it on top of the put, put it on top of the stack. Um, yes, we for case expression we're using this notation. So now, for the first case with multiplication, we just multiplying the um, the two numbers. The ID says you don't need those brackets here. Uh, we should be fine without the brackets. So let's do that. Same here. So we can simplify the code a little bit. Um, and then, so we do the multiplication for multiplication. We do the plus for the plus. Otherwise we convert what we got into a number, which we put on top of the stack. If it was legitimate, if it was some rubbish, we just ignore it. So it, the program will kind of ignore the rubbish uh, additional things as, as it is ignoring them um, originally with the parsing of the list of the ints. All right, so let's write some simple tests for this. So um, simple calculator evaluation function. function. And what, what can we test it with? So we can uh, say eval three 
and uh, so eval3 with the empty stack and what we should get we should get three on top of the stack uh, if we call if we call eval multiply with two and three being already on the stack what we should get is we should get a stack with number six on it and then we can test the plus so if we evaluate plus and of course those things need to be strings so if we evaluate a string with the um, two and three on the stack we should get a stack which is five all right so let's let's try that so let's test this test first the test the tests uh something i modified something and now the thinking doesn't like what I've modified, so let me check in the library what did I change. Um, I played here with the integral. I don't want the integral. We can just say int into int. All right, so let let's retest this. Yeah, I need a faster laptop. Uh, now you got scared now. Now you're doing some things. All right, so everything works fine. Uh, all our tests pass, which means our not thinking is not that important. Our math tests evaluate to what we think they evaluate. So now uh, we need a function which will effectively go over our um, um, our input string and so what we can do is we can call it calculate and calculate will take a string and it will produce it will produce um, a list of ints so it will actually uh, we can say it will produce a stack and calculate um, yeah so we, we don't want a, a string we have already done that we need a list of words we need a list of strings so calculate um, of the head and the rest of the strings will do and we need a base case calculate calculate something on the empty string is just an empty stack and then if we get uh, a head and the, the 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 rest of the strings we gonna evaluate the head in the context of um Yeah, so here we could uh, pass it a state, uh, which is our stack, or we can assume calculate is always called on an empty stack, and then we pass the empty stack inside the body, right? So uh, I didn't pass here a, a parameter which would, say, which would say, evaluate me those uh, list of instructions or those uh, list of calculations in the context of an existing uh, stack. I said, we don't have a stack, so evaluate them in the context of an empty stack. Um, so we can say, okay, evaluate X in the context of an empty stack uh, and eval X in the context of an empty stack returns a stack, right? So we will say, okay, that returns um, um, 
how we can call it um, first processed okay so this is the the stack after processing the first one and then the final result of calculate is to calculate calculate um, x s but we like if we call it recursively we're gonna lose the the current stack so we do need to have to keep track of the stack um i don't really want to use faults so i would rather have it implemented as a um as a recursive call initially uh, later you will learn that it can be achieved much easier using faults but let's do it without so we need a function uh, which will um, we need we need kind of a helper function which will keep track of the current version of the stack such that the subsequent calls to it will be kind of modifying our state. So we need a function. Let's call it uh, calc partially, and calc partially also takes um, it takes a. Um, a sequence of strings, the list of strings, and produces a stack. But it takes a stack as a, the, the 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 current stack as a parameter, right? Um, we can either do it like having a, a helper function, or we can just say, ah, uh, screw it, let's pass the initial state to calculate, such that we can call it recursively, right? So I can modify this. So I, I will say, okay, stack uh, calculate takes the list of instructions or numbers to be calculated, the initial, the, the current version of the stack and returns the new version after this whole thing is done, right? So if we pass it uh, an empty string and we don't care about the stack, we return an empty stack. If we pass it the non-empty string list and we have the current stack, which is called stack, then we, we say, um, calculate calculate um, xs in the first processed stack where uh, first process stack is equal to the evaluation of x in the context of the stack so the this stack is used to evaluate x and then the resulting stack is here and then the resulting stack is used to calculate the rest of the items which we have to calculate such that we have a kind of a nice recursive call and we can calculate um you know a number of elements and see what what we will get so again let's do some tests um so let's write um process a list of words operations or numbers uh, and uh, in the context of a given starting stack and and return the resulting stack okay so what can we test for example we could say okay if i pass it uh, a list of three and two and a symbol for addition then what i would expect and i call it calculate so if i pass it um three two plus in the context of an empty stack uh, i would expect to get five a stack with the five as a result correct so let's write another test so calculate and if I pass it, let's pass it three and multiplication. And then in the context of a stack which has value 10 on it, uh, I would expect a stack which will have 30 as a result. All right, so with those two tests, let's let's test this we had nine tests i've added two so we should have 11 tests now just a sanity check that 
we testing it properly okay and we will go to main and we will modify that um, what you complaining about so let's see I don't have anything highlighted here and the tests the comment tests should run Okay, so we do have a failure. Uh, we pass calculate to three to plus and we pass it an empty stack to start with. And we do have 11 tests, which is fine. And we get an empty, empty stack instead of five. Why could that be? Uh, so let's check. Um, all right, so the, the problem is that if we call, when we call calculate with an empty string, we should not return an empty stack. We should return the stack that the current calculate has, right? So the, the stack um, that the calculate is called with as the last thing. So, you know, we uh, keep using the tail for processing the calculate and at some point we're gonna call it with an empty empty string because we we you know reach the end of the of the input uh, when we do that the second parameter is the current state of the stack such that we should return it so let's uh, save this uh, and let's uh, recalculate um, so why Yeah, let's let's retest this and I will think what this guy is complaining about. Um, yeah, so it's complaining that calculate is defined but not used. Yes, we, do, we haven't used calculate yet. So that complaint is valid. All right, so um, once this passes, And it passes this time. We have 11 tests and everything passed. So all those evaluations here are correct. Uh, we are ready to modify our main function. So our main function currently calls process all. And all we do is we filter ints from the text, uh, but we don't want to do that. What we want is we want to calculate, um, calculate. And when we do calculate and we export uh, we can export calculate function to our main. So main is, you know, uh, importing all the functions from our math module uh, and the calculate will return. Um, it will return a list of ints and then show will show us the, the list of ints. Um, yeah, so uh, it complains that um, because process all takes a string uh, and in our case, the calculate expects already a list of, of words. So what we have to do is we have to say words on top of the text and then calculate can take that and process the, the result. And uh, show doesn't know how to print how to convert stack our math stack into the um into something that can be represented as a as a string so let's write a simple function here so we define the stack and we let's call a function uh, show stack 
which will take a stack and produce a string. So if we say show stack s, uh, how would we like this to be? Like what would we like to get out? Um, I propose we get um, the list of numbers if we have more than one as a comma separated list of uh, of numbers. So what we can do is we can say um, the stack is uh, effectively a list of ints. Um, so what we do is we can map show on our S um, and we can convert that with um, uh, intercolate inter collate, uh, with the space uh, and the um, uh, comma symbol. So let's see. Inter I spelled it probably wrong. Yeah, I spell it correctly, but it's it's not in the imported um, packages that we have. So uh, what intercalate does, it takes uh, a list of words and it injects uh, a whatever I I is a second argument, uh, a first argument. I mean, so it it takes. Yeah, let me show you. Um, so um, information on intercolate. Yes, so module plus data list. All right, so intercolate. Um, intercolate takes um, an, an element uh, and then it will, um, using the list of those elements, uh, produce kind of a flat list of this element being kind of injected in between all those elements that are here, right? So what I have here is that stack is the uh, list of ints. I converted them to strings. So I will now have a list of strings and intercolate will inject a comma space between those strings and then flatten it to just be a string. Um, so if we now in our main, instead of saying show, but we will say show stack, uh, we're gonna get either a single item with with uh, nothing else. If it's just a one item, then uh, I will uh, get it back, or I will get multiple items which are kind of a comma separated. So let's um, show stack. Let's export this. Let's go back to our main that should kick in at some point and let's test this. So uh, stack test. Um, intercalate is not in scope. Why? Ah, yeah, because I removed, I, I did a uh, keyboard. Um, yes, I did some keyboard shortcut and it reverted this adding of the of the import. All right, so let's uh, let's test it with tests first. I didn't test it the show, uh, but let's see if it compiles and then we can run it and we can see we can see our calculator in action. Uh, not yet. Um, so the expected tire yeah, we we didn't update it. The um, which f function is that? So in line ten, in main. We
Yeah. So what's the show stack takes? Show stack takes a stack and returns a string. Um, yes. And in main. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we um, we're doing everything right. We just forgot about one parameter. So calculate takes two parameters, not just one parameter, right? So remember when we rewrote calculate to take the uh, the initial stack as a second parameter, such that we don't need the utility function. Uh, we have to call calculate with two parameters. So the first parameter is the the text the list of words that we are passing to it and then the second parameter is the so let me rewrite it so this is the first parameter to calculate the second parameter is the current version of the stack which is empty right so now as you see i have a ending bracket here and the beginning bracket here so i can substitute those two brackets with the um, dollar sign so I can I can do that such that we have less brackets to deal with. So it says, OK, show the stack and do this first and calculate takes two elements, which is this, the text, which is the list of words and the, in, you know, initial um, initial stack. So let's run rerun our tests. Sometimes the error messages might be confusing and if you get you know, if you're staring at the error message and you have no idea why you have an error, usually it's your syntax problem or, you know, you have brackets in the wrong place or dollar in the wrong place or you're not passing, you know, the properly the, the types. So, of course, our types are correct because we've tested it before. Uh, we just, we were using it wrong. All right, so all the tests pass. Everything works. So, if I run it um, and we pass it some uh, some text, so I can do, we can pass it two, three with the plus. So that would be five and I will put some rubbish before the plus. And then we, uh, we finish this and it says five. So we, we have our calculation with a single expression working fine. So what if I do, um, if I do it again, so I will say uh, two, some rubbish, three, some rubbish, multiply some rubbish, and then put 10 and multiply at the end. So then we have six times 10, we should get 60 at the end. So let's have a look. Yes, and we got 60. All right, so the, the calculator works. It ignores all the rubbish, uh, which is um, not parsed properly. It doesn't give us any errors or we don't know if there were errors because we kind of ignoring all the errors. We're dealing with them, but we ignoring them. And then it calculates uh, the multiplication and the sum. Uh, we only implemented two functions, uh, but it's you know very simple uh, to modify the code to add other operations that you want. Um, if you want a single, uh, operation. So, for example, what we could do is we could have a special operation, which is um, um, something that just takes one argument for the sake of, uh, of example. So, for example, if we define our S, uh, our operation to be um, the power of two, right? So we take a number, a single number, and we make a power of two out of it. So we say head stack power power of two and concatenate it with the um, drop uh, with the tail of stack, right? So we take the first element uh, of the stack, we calculate the power of it, power of two, and attach it to the 
uh, to the tail of the stack, which is the stack without the first element. Um, yeah, so it kind of complains about the integer and saying, well, you, you're doing the power of, and the power of has some uh, constraints on the on the type classes. So it, it is of a kind of an integral type. Um, so yeah, we can, let's, let's ignore it for now. Um, so we don't have any tests for it, so I will run it and we can test it in the, in the rep, um, in, uh, through the standard input. All right, so we have our normal things. So I can say, for example, uh, two, three plus, that, that would be five. And then I can say, what's the uh, power of two, oops, uh, power of two of five. So power of two consumes just one item out of the stack and puts it back on the stack. So I should get a stack with just um, a sim single element back, which is the power of two of five. So five to the power of two is uh, 25. Uh, to make it, um, what we could do is uh, we could, um, because this is like um, multiplying the, the last item on the stack by itself, right? Uh, so let's change it to, to be two to the power of what is the last element of the, of the stack, right? So instead of doing that, let's make it two to the power of the last element of the stack. And let's test this. So now if I rerun it and I we can uh, reuse the, um, the five again, then I should get two to the power of five, right? Which uh, should be plus two to the power of, uh, and we have the result. So two to the power of five is 32, which is true because two to the power of four is 16, and then 16 times two is 32. So all works well, and you can play with the with your calculator. We're gonna expand this, so we're gonna expand it by two things. First, we will deal a little bit better with error handling, such that at the end of the calculations we can have an error stack, and we can see if there was something incorrect or if there was everything fine. Uh, we can do that easily by modifying the um the the current system with the maybes and treating errors error conditions with with maybes uh, but then as we had before uh we would need to deal with the ability to add um you know maybes and if you're trying to add maybes to nothing then you have to decide what what does it mean uh is adding uh you know maybes to nothing kind of another error or you're gonna ignore it or it's gonna lead to something. Uh, so you you have some decisions to make, but then we can deal with the errors. That's one thing. And the second thing is this kind of renders itself nicely for additional things such that I can have methods such as pop something from the stack, uh, push, like pushing to the stack is currently done naturally by just having a number, right? So, but I don't have popping things from the stack and I don't have other uh, things like swapping the two elements on the stack and so on. So we can kind of add those things in such a way that we can get sort of a very minimal programming language, which is stack based. And we can try to write some programs in, in that language and, and kind of do a more elaborate um, in interpretation of some of the sequences that we want to deal with. So for now, I will close this. Uh, I will commit the, the code to the class uh, to the um, class repository and you can play with it, you can expand it and you can use it as a kind of a starting point for more elaborate calculations uh, using the, uh, the command line. I will do one more thing. So currently uh, in the main, 
what we do is we sort of reuse the interact which passes the entire input and we, we don't call process all until after I press control D. Um, sometimes you want that, sometimes you want to process the entire thing kind of um, at once, but uh, in this particular case, what might be nicer is if we do something else. So if we get the line uh, and we do and we do kind of a process it uh, line by line, right? So I need to show stack and yeah, I can I can call it with process all um, and with the line. So I can I can call it like this, and we we want to do that um, in in a sort of in a loop, right? So we, we're gonna get a line, feed it into the process all, show what the stack is, and come back and um, ask the user for, you know, for the next input, such that we can do multiple calculations without closing the, the program. Um, so first of all, we kind of, we can put some string line, some sort of prompt such that the, the user will know that uh, the, uh, the prompt is waiting. Uh, and the second thing is we want to kind of uh, do it, do it in a loop, right? So um, there is uh, there is a function which is called forever uh, and we can sort of um, we can try that. So let's see what is the type of forever. I forever. Well, it's not in here, so we have to go to Google because I don't know all those things by by heart. So let's go Google forever. So forever, um, yeah, that's not what we really want. No, that's not what we want. We don't want forever. We want kind of just a recursive call really. So what we will do is we just say, yeah, forever is for something else. So we just say, okay, print the line and call back to main, right? So we, we're gonna have, uh, sort of like a, a recursion hill here, which goes forever until something. So maybe we can kind of have, a, you know, a, a quit condition here, which says if line is different, um, is different than, and we use the same as with the, um, you know, uh, GHCI. So unless someone pr puts this, we're gonna call main, um, then main else um, we say, so let's do return empty. All right, so now what we have here, yeah, so process all is not, uh, process all is already having show stack doing it for us so we only need to print it so put string line and then yeah we can use the dollar sign excellent uh, yeah so id is suggesting that instead of saying if line equal not equals then blah 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 we could change it to so show it we can change it to a when uh, and re rephrase it with the when um, uh, function. And the when function lives in control monad. I would need to import it, so it would kind of add additional dependency, which we don't need at the moment. So I will just leave it leave it at, 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 as it is. So let's let's test it. So let's run the current calculator interpreters kind of thing. So it should prompt us, 
Oh yeah, so it prompts us, but it prompts us with the end, end of line character. So let's get rid of that. Uh, all right. And then we can put some stuff in and it will return us the, the stack. So if I just put the numbers, I get the numbers out. If I put one number, I get one number back. If I put a multiplication, um, that crashes and that crashes because we don't deal with the errors. So it deals with the with some of the input errors such that we can put rubbish in and it will in ignore the rubbish. But if we put multiplication and the multiplication says I need to fetch two items from the stack and the stack is empty, then it will crash the program. We don't deal with that yet. So we cannot do that. So, but we can, uh, yeah, so now, <laughs> Now we have this sort of a stupid problem of um, we printing something without the end of line character and the um, Haskell is not putting it out because it's lazy and it will only put stuff when there is a new line character. Otherwise it treats, it doesn't do the flash effectively, right? So what we need to do is we need to um, go to we need to go to Hoogle again and we need to find how to do the IO flash. Um, so flash is, um, so, but we don't want the graphics one. We want the, yeah, there is a lot of flashing. There is data byte string text let me see maybe it is text No, I don't think it's text. Um, let's see, what else can I get? We can always Google for it. No, not channels, call buffer mode. Those are all useful, but not for the standard IO. Yeah, let's just Google for it. Standard IO Haskell flash. System IO. Yeah, so that's, that's the function that we need. So it's inside system IO and it um, it's called H flash and it flashes the, the current stream that you put it as a parameter and that is defined in system IO. Okay, fair enough. So what we need to do is we need to say we import, uh, import uh, system IO and then we say after printing, we say H flash and then we call it standard out such that we get the um, the printout immediately before there is an end of line character and this this um, prompt will be printed for us so let's test this Yare, yare, yare. All right, yes, great. We have our prompt. We could put our numbers, we get our results and the prompt looks good. So if I say three, four, multiply, I get 12, fantastic. Uh, if I do what's the power, what's two to the power of 20, it's that number. <laughs> uh, great, so it kind of works. Um, you can change 
like if you really want like we could uh try it with a really big number so how about power of two of this really big number and it overflows right so we currently are limited by the capacity of our our integers uh and if you want to deal with really big numbers we could yeah i mean we could change it to floats and then you would have uh floating floating point numbers or we could change it to integer and then that would mean our calculations are um, kind of not limited to so let's change it to integer where we would need to change it so our stack in, in how many places do we need to do the modification? Uh, in two places, because we using it for converting the numbers. So we are using it here when converting to a maybe and in the definition of the stack. So if I change that to the integer, okay. And in here, yeah, we don't need those brackets, but we, okay, so for the style, let's try without the brackets. Okay. All right, let's try that. One more place, uh, 101. So filter, why? We didn't change anything with the, ah, yeah, we did. Uh, because the convert to maybe is now taking an integer, not an int. Okay, so that is that, that is that change. Um, convert to maybe extract int yes so extract int also uh, we that this has nothing to do with our calculator integer integer but it has to do with some of the examples which we use in the class all right so now it should work so it was the the stuff that we've used in the lecture so let's see perfect so 1000 2 to the power of 1000 perfect it works so now we have the answer what is 1000 two, two, 2 to the power of 1000 is this one um yeah so that's it uh let's test the quitting yes the quitting also works so we have kind of a skeleton. Uh, we can work with it uh, a little bit more and we will expand it to deal with the errors. So currently, as I was explaining, we deal with some rubbish input that works fine. So we have numbers, rubbish, numbers, rubbish, and then some operation. And the operation has enough operands on the stack that works. But if we have, if we call an operand or if we even call something that needs one element on the stack, and there is nothing on the stack, it will blow up, right? So because we have an empty list. So our stack is empty. So this operation doesn't work. So what we would like to have is perhaps a mechanism for uh, saying, okay, uh, this operation couldn't be executed because it didn't have the operands on the stack. Therefore, we logging an error and ignoring that call, right? So that's one way, you know, that's kind of a Java script way of dealing with stuff. Like you can call stuff that doesn't work and it sort of always works, but not necessarily doing what you think it should be doing. Uh, so we can kind of do same here that if we call something and the missing arguments, we kind of just ignore it silently, uh, but we will log it into the uh, error log such that some operations didn't work as expected. So at the end of the execution of the program, if everything was strict and everything was kind of lined up, then your error log will be empty. But if there was some mis mis mishappens, like, like this case, uh, you will end up with the 
with the error errors locked. So for example, if I do uh, 2 plus 3, and I, I have one number on the stack, and then I calculate the, the power, 2 to the power of that number, I will have one number on the stack, and that works. So up to that point, all my program is fine, and it's strict, and it's executed correctly. And then I can put some rubbish and it will ignore it. Maybe the, the rubbish is just a comment. So I, I would say up to this point all worked, right? Uh, we, we can kind of ignore that, that comment. And then I will put a plus. And now, uh, because I only have one element on the stack, um, we can log an error saying, okay, we got the plus, but we ignored it and we logged an error that plus was called just with one argument and that plus needs two arguments, right? Such that at the end of the program, you will have this two to the power of five plus the error that the plus didn't work. So you will have a bit richer uh, syntax. So at the moment, if I press enter, that it, it just blows up and we don't know what happens. Like we don't know how far everything worked and how far it didn't because it just stops. But if we add this functionality, we will be able to tell if part of our program executed correctly up to when, and then if something didn't work, it will be locked, and then you know subsequently uh, it it could work. So for example, if I have two to the power of that one number which I have on the stack, I could get that calculated, right? So uh, again, you know, not picking on JavaScript too much, but uh, or Python. But you know that is kind of the behavior that you get out of dynamic languages often, that some things that kind of don't really make sense still work and they give you a result. And it sometimes, you know, that's what you want. This is the sort of the expected result because the program always behaved that way. Um, in kind of a strict languages, yeah, th those things are caught by the compiler and they, usually you don't have this sort of uh, unexpected behavior, right? But here what we could do is we could have our program working like this, ignoring all this, and then on the plus saying, well, I kind of ignore the plus because plus was called with one element and it needs two, so mm, yeah, I forget about it. And then I would call that on the, on the number that I have on the stack and it would work. So currently it, it just doesn't work at all, uh, but if, I, if we make those changes, we can have a more robust sort of uh, interpreter for other things that we might want to, to deal with. Okay, so now that's it. Um, I, I hope you sort of learned a little bit about uh, how we can approach the second assignment. And with the second assignment in mind, uh, yeah, play, play with this. Uh, as a homework, what you could try to do is you could try to parse um, floats and integers. Uh, of course, you can modify um, you can modify this to floats and it would just work um, with, just with floats. You can treat integers as floats as well. Uh, and then, you know, Haskell will do all the logic, all, all the calculations here the same way. Um, but you need to think a little bit what cu currently our data is just numbers. And that's very nice because as I said, you, you can just change this to floats and then everything works fine. But what if we say, what if we modify it and we say this is some sort of a value and we have a type system. So we say the value is something more than just numbers, right? So we can have a value which is an int, but we can have a value that is a bool or we can have a value that is a string, right? We can kind of... Um, create a, a data type, um, algebraic da data type for us, and declare that we have, you know, different types of values, and then our stack is a composition of those different types of values. And then if I say add, I would expect that on the top of the stack, I can have two ints, but not really two bools or two strings. And if I have add and I have two strings, maybe, I have kind of a plus plus like we have in Haskell for concatenating uh, strings or lists of characters in, the, in that case, and that would work, right? So we can differentiate a little bit between uh, the different types. So 
yeah um, I don't want to go too far ahead of this so let's keep it simple as it is now let's keep it as integers uh, and I will commit the code and uh, you can check it out in the in the course repository all right so that's that's all thank you